Hi, thanks for tuning in to Love Life 2. This is the new season on positive gender dynamics, and I'm your host, Dr. Babe. Today's show is called Guide Code, and we'll be talking about the rules that guide male behaviors in relationships, both in friendships and in dating. And on today's show, we have Craig Anthony Jervis Thank for the second time. Thank second you very time. much Thank for you. coming on. And we have John Wattler. Is it John Wattler or Renegade? Which one are we going with? Which one do you want? It doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, we're talking about guy code and, 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 you know, we've switched the topic around a little bit uh, just so that it's more uh, encompassing of guy friendships and dating and not just focusing on the dating. Because I think it's also important to explore a little bit about male friendships in general, something that we don't get to hear a lot about as women. Right. So I'm curious to get your views on that. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when we come back from the break. John, Selecta. Hello. Uh, why don't I start with you? Just kind of. assistant today, Taylor. <laughs> Give us a little bit of uh, information I know, but just to sort of tell our audience, like what your relationship status is and, and what you do, obviously, like uh, generally in your life. What do you, how do you spend your time? Um, married and under manners. Exactly. What's that? I'm married and under manners. I okay. think, I don't oh, remember okay, how okay. long I've been married. So I, I'm just putting it out there. I wasn't going to ask you. No, now I'm putting it because I'm real. Okay. I'm the realest guest you'll ever get. <laughs> um, I don't remember how long I've been married. I know it's more than two years. <laughs> There's a reason why, so she won't get upset. Um, but yeah, I've been happily married. We, we do a lot of stuff. I think the difference in how we approach our marriage is we still date. Excellent. It's hard, but we still date. I would think that's really important. Yeah. You know, you have to keep that chemistry there. Yeah. And, yeah. Like that mystery, right? Yeah. I think that's what dating can allow for. Mm -hmm. So 
most people know what you do, but you want to tell us a little bit about that? Um, I'm a DJ and an entrepreneur. I travel the world and also here DJing at various parties, private parties, weddings, and the same overseas. Um, I also work on Star 92.7, the morning show host. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, excellent. It's one big party. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. And what about you, Mr. Craig Anthony? Um, what's your relationship status? What do you do with your days? I am single. What? <laughs> single. Single as single as they come. And unattached, you said before. Unattached, yeah. right? Unengaged, enjoying life. Um, enjoying the variety of personalities that are a part of my life. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I like that wow. saying. That's a good way to say it. Variety of personalities. Correct. Yes, right? I got it. Um, and yeah, and I, I tend to enjoy my life. I do not hesitate to have a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is the crux of Craig Anthony right there. You know what was funny was after the last show that we did, mm -hmm. I posted some picture of you and I got an interesting response to it, and I didn't know who it was clearly, but they said, hey, is that Mr. Craig Anthony? Mm -hmm. And then another woman came back and I was like, oh gosh, what trouble did I start now? But it was your mom. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. And what she, was her comment? She was just saying, you know, I want that picture because you look so handsome and stuff like that. But I, 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 think she, I think she's the biggest, my biggest fan. Yeah? Without a doubt, she's my biggest fan. That's, a That's the number one girl in my life. Excellent. Big up yourself. <laughs> so just getting started um, on the topic of guy code today, we're, we wanted to start with relation, with uh, friendships, guy mm -hmm. friendships. Can you think of, I don't know if you had a chance to sort of come up with some ideas of what those rules or expectations you might have between guy friends? Like, I don't know, I, I always remember the one about the urinal, like you want to stay a certain amount, like away from the other guy in the urinal, but... That's not. Who's that's first? Just me. <laughs> I, I want to start with John because you, I, I'm going to get you on your dating stuff. Um, I don't think there's that much rules because I'm I'm very close. I'm not like Craig okay. who lives his life every day, and I actually have to plan everything. So my friend, my circle is very tight. So mm. we've been friends from primary school up so I know what you shouldn't do. I mean the basic guy code rules is yeah the urinals and stuff like that but for <laughs> mine it's like we're we're more intimate on on, on certain rules like obviously <clears throat> when I was single um, you could call them on anyone up and they'll give you an alibi where I was. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's yep. So you're in need of alibis? <laughs> when I was single. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Fair enough, fair enough. Or his mom when would be single. calling somebody trying to find out where Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're like, were you here? And like, yeah, act so and so. He knows I was there all night. And mm -hmm. but that's as far like as Like a no goes. questions asked yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, flat tires, um, you in trouble with something, it might not, it could be physical or not. They're, they're just always You watch there. right back, I watch yours. Yeah, we, it's always, we, there is no questions asked mm -hmm. since we have each other's back. And does that extend, I mean, you're saying you don't have that many guy friends, but does it extend to people who maybe aren't that close? Like how, how extensive is that rule? Does it, acquaintances? Nah, you, gotta, you gotta be close. Yeah, you have to be. I think you have to definitely be within that circle of trust. You have to sit at the dining table of superheroes to get certain powers extended to you, you ah, know? I see. And what about the, the ex-girl situation? We talked about that a bit on the last episode on Girl Code, uh, about, you know, the expectations of girls not dating exes of each other. Do you guys have the same rule? Specify, uh, go into a bit more detail <laughs> when you ask that question. There's more gray area for guys, I'm taking it. Like, if you've dated someone, right. And, and, you know, your friend was, was, it didn't work out, it right. ended, it didn't get that serious maybe. Right. Would you then expect your guy friend, who's your buddy, he's your pal, he's right. at the table, <laughs> right. um, to stay away from her, like she's off limits? I think the most important element in any relationship is communication, whether it's between bros or between a guy and a girl, mm -hmm. right? And if you are of a particular convincing that your friend is still very emotionally attached or interested in the individual. The relationship might have ended, it might have expired. Mm -hmm. And you have not the knowledge that your friend is so inclined to this individual. I mean, there's seven billion people in the world, you can leave her alone, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it has to come from that point of communication. And if you're not close enough for the gentleman to have that kind of conversation, then I think the, the, the floor is open. You can definitely make moves at courtship with, with the, the girl in question, right? Okay, and, and what happens if he doesn't, if he doesn't say anything and, and you find out that he's seeing her or sleeping with her or whatever? It depends. I mean, how close is he? Well, this is, this is the thing, like, we, we are not women, 
so we know what's happening. What do you he's mean? Not he's not going to hold a secret and right. say, yo, I mean, oh, you, Craig was with, no, like, we know if, if you own her up and that's your girlfriend, mm -hmm. it's off limits. Now, if it was, as Craig said, various personalities, right? then, yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm trying to get at. You don't find the homies can't get none. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sensing there's a little bit more of a gradient, you know, for guys. Like, it, it's, not, it's not quite as rigid of a rule. Um, whereas, I think women, what, what I was hearing from the other girls in the, in the last show was that if you've ever mm -hmm. been with a guy, he's off limits. Mm -hmm. Which I think is a very difficult rule to enforce, yeah, especially in K-Man. Unrealistic. Unrealistic. Mm -hmm. But, all right, well, I mean, let's just get to the point a little bit. I mean, as single men, not, you're not single, but when you were, in general, single men, especially West Indian men, are going to have more of the proclivity to date a lot, to, to be sleeping with, you know, a, a higher number of people. Dating and sleeping with a number of people is two different things. Okay, I don't you want explain to put it in to the me. Hot water here. No. Okay. Courtship, courtship from start to end does not always have to start. Sorry, does not always have to end with the individuals having sex or having that time to to become so intimate, right? So not because we date a lot or we, we associate ourselves <coughs> excuse me, with a number of female characters that, that means that they're being used for mm -hmm. sexual manners, right? Mm -hmm. Just to make it clear. Can I ask a question? Sure can. Or may I? Um, so are there levels? Do you use levels in your, <laughs> in your dating strategy? Do you feel like there are some women that are appropriate for... Um, one night experiences that there are some that are more friendship oriented that are some that are more friends with benefits I think for me personally mm -hmm. uh, my interest in a woman starts with her appearance and it's, it's the reality of it right um, or there are sometimes on rare occasions where I might hear her speak or I might read something that she's written or the physical is not there for me to appreciate right the tendency does tend to happen with an appearance. Mm -hmm. Conversation starts, or my interest starts, a conversation ensues. And the, 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 the attention that she draws, me too, mm -hmm. as it relates to her. Like her energy? Her energy, yeah. right? It starts, it starts there, right? Um, do I, do I, do I? John's laughing. I'm, just, I'm trying to answer this question without putting myself in a hot pot. Uh -huh. um, the interest starts, her appearance is there. We, 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 the, the conversation develops. Um, I don't know if the intention ultimately is to have sex with her. Mm -hmm. um, if she's exceptionally gorgeous or she has a sex appeal that would be tantamount mm -hmm. to that, then sure, fine, of course, or you want. Um, but I don't know that every woman ultimately is considered as a sex object, or I see I her didn't like say that. I, I didn't. I didn't assume that. <laughs> I, I think it's it's one thing to say someone is a objectified sexually, right. and another thing to say, I would guess that men in general, uh, their goal is to have sex with women they're attracted to, and it, and, and to them, you know, number is is not the issue. Whereas for women. That is more of an issue because we have to be more selective about our partners mm -hmm. um, to protect, you know, our energy. Um, obviously, we have biologically, like there are just different factors in place. You know, men are uh, biologically um, driven and motivated. So I'm not saying you are consciously doing this mm -hmm. or you have done this, but just men in general, um, because of evolutionary psychology, are driven to procreate. So they're um, <clears throat> motivated to spread their seeds, so to speak, right? Whereas women, you know, we need to uh, be de desirable to a man to then sort of have a domestic relationship with and have that, that union, that pair bond, or create that monogamous relationship with. So I think it's, it's about two different approaches, right? And so they're going to be those women that you want to uh, look at mm -hmm. in that sense that are more quality, and then the other ones that you can sort of have your fun with, so to right. speak. Would, would, is that clearer? Mm -mm. No? I'll answer no. it for you real quick. I, from what I got from your question was, does it matter who we wife or who we have fun with? Okay. No. No. We do what we do, and if you're good enough to keep us off of that, or vice versa, uh -huh. then that's Never. where it goes. The stage, that's the, what the I stage up. I never went to say, oh, I want to wife her. I never went to say, oh, I don't want, like, you keep, as you say, you keep the level there. 
fun might become serious. And serious might become fun. <laughs> you know that point's come up before on an episode that, I think it was the One Love episode with Luigi and Nicole, and they made the same point that you're not actually looking for a long-term relationship, right. but that you're just having so much fun mm. that it, it becomes evolved. a solid, yeah, a, a evolved, evolving into a relationship. Mm -hmm. But you're really making some some excellent points, and, and I've got my wheel spinning now. I want to get Is back this into... to help you? Uh, uh, to, to help oh. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> to help everybody. You, know, you know me, I'm the, I'm the marriage therapist, but I like to talk about relationships in general, not just monogamous relationships or long-term relationships, but broaden the topic. Mm -hmm. So we will be right back on Love Life 2 and talk more about Guy Code. 20 reasons to attend the International College of the Cayman Islands. In 20 seconds. Job promotion. Night classes. Challenging. Affordable tuition. Brilliant professors. Business. Friendly environment. <laughs> Accounting. Finance. Liberal arts. Leadership. Broadcasting. Enthusiasm. New career. Associate. Bachelors. Internship. Diversity. 40 year history. Hey, that's only 19 reasons. We're internationally accredited. Yes, cut. Welcome back to Love Life 2. We're having way too much fun on this show, but I, I'm really liking it. So just to kind of get us back um, on track, I wanted to, to see your opinion or hear your opinion about some ideas that I have that I've been uh, using more so in That's my in my counseling. And, tantamount. Yes. <laughs> um, tantamount is the word of the day. Which is great. I, I like how you just threw it in there. Uh, I don't think I have a couple more I can pull out my hat, you know? Feel free. Excellent. So when we're talking about guy code and sort of the strategy that men use when they are, just let's use dating for um, male-female interactions, um, I find that one thing that's really, really important as a strategy, not to play a game in a deceitful way, but it's a really important um, approach to take that can create or improve, enhance your successes, right? It's not just about notches on a belt, but it's about creating successful relationships, which is more my focus, right, as a, as a relationship therapist. Um, whereas, you know, when you're men, you might just be talking about just being able to meet that woman and take her home, perhaps. But, okay, so the strategy is really about maintaining a very masculine frame. So keeping yourself as like the point of origin, because what we're seeing a lot now is sort of the evolution of, of men becoming the, the Romeos and the Romantics and soften, like their masculinity is softened. So they're more putting women on pedestals and trying to be more vulnerable and emotional and things like that. And I'm not saying that that's bad or wrong, but that we can't lose sight of men being masculine, men being the leaders in relationships. So that is what I try to help train, for lack of a better word, men to do is to, to change their thinking from this emasculated uh, approach and take the woman off the bloody pedestal <laughs> and remember that they're the ones that need to be putting themselves first and maintaining that strong, independent, powerful control. You're nodding your head, so you're resonating That's with That's what you tell people to do? That is what I tell people. We, take, we put ourselves on the pedestal and take the wife. Take her off the pedestal, select her, and you step on that pedestal. So and that will help the relationship? Long you think you'll be not long. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a difference between what you do when you're in a marriage or in a long-term relationship and what you do to get there, right. right? So it's really important to maintain that frame so that you create the healthy dynamic where it, it sort of maintains this respect so that the woman respects the man, respects his leadership role, and then the man can respect her role as the woman um, in a long-term relationship that sort of takes care of him, but also inspires him, is uh, right. nurturing, and all the things that we talked about before as right. well. 
but obviously it's going to be something that it shifts a little bit once you are in the relationship and then it becomes more mm -hmm. of, a, of a marriage or long-term relationship. If I might interject, Taylor, mm -hmm. I think it boils down to this and this alone in my, in my purview, confidence. Yeah. I don't think I have to take her off of any pedestal because I'd love for her to be there, right? Um, if I have confidence enough in self, right, I can maintain my very strong masculine presence in and around whoever this woman is without having to, so to speak, take her off her pedestal. You're not married. Not yet. <laughs> you know? Hey, you want me? <laughs> That's what you no, no. I want her. I want her on the pedestal. I don't yes, believe I need do. to remove her from a pedestal, so to speak, to embrace my masculinity. Mm. I want to be the man that I am with my woman, for instance, on that pedestal, right? Catering to her, um, going through the rules of being a good husband, like John is, right? Um, but I don't. I don't think that there's a need, so to speak, to embolden yourself so much as a man to have to take a woman off of any pedestal. You know? Well, what happens is when a woman senses that she's on that pedestal with mm -hmm. you is that she just tries to take that control away and she tries to lead the relationship. Not if, if I am doing my due and being the man that I'm supposed to be with the confidence that is requisite. I mean, she can try, <laughs> she can try, mm -hmm. but she'll never be able to fill the shoes or the gap that I am in as a man in the picture. But you, you have to... You have to give off that vibe to her, and she has to then respect you. She has to communicate that respect. She should be on a pedestal compared to other women, right? But she shouldn't be in a, a in the powerful position between you and she. Right, right. Okay, I that's get what, you're what saying. I mean. Hmm. So I there's to, a difference. I'm following you a bit better now. Okay, and do, yeah, I know. I'm wondering hmm. what you're thinking over there as the married man. I'd love man. to hear the argument. When you do get in a relationship. I'm uh -huh. sure right now my phone is going off. It's not <laughs> live, is it? No, it's not live. Okay, but here's another concept for you. I, I would like to hear what you think about this. There's a concept called dread. And basically what it's about, it's about sort of subtly implying that you maintain this frame and this control. And, and in a way that the woman that you're with, she, you want her to be confident, but you don't want her to be, to be smug. You don't want her to feel like she can take you for granted. Because when a woman begins to take you for granted, the power dynamic shifts, right? So this, this implicit dread is a feeling that you give off so that she knows there's competition out there. And when she knows that there's competition out there, she's always going to be, you know, sort of trying to impress you. And, or her e-game. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me about any examples of that that you think are helpful. John? Did I say it right? Did I say it well? Did I describe it? I don't have to do a guy code, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting all the secrets out there. All right. I mean, yeah, it's the same like what I said. Like me and my wife's date, like, she always will surprise me or put so much effort when I would be like, you don't need to. I already married you. And she's like, oh, no. There's no way I'm going to go out and you look at someone else. So she actually identified that within the relationship. Yeah. And I appreciate it. So she goes 110% on every given day whenever she has to step out. Because, as you said, she doesn't want it to be smug. Exactly. She wants me to always have her attention and vice versa. So on top of the teaser, the sword that she carries <laughs> in her back, just in case the girl's decides to get that Just in case. Thing. But, um, yeah, like, yeah, she's, she's, she's really on it. But I think that's you applying, if you want to call it a code or a strategy or whatever, intentionally or not, it might just come more naturally to you. And I think that's what happens is you, there are some people that these things come naturally to uh, and some people that really need to get this mentorship on it mm -hmm. because it's not about, it's not about uh, sort of, um, let's say for you, Craig, um, it's not about me then telling you how to change as a person. Mm -hmm. It's about improving your weaknesses. You know, if you can identify where you're weak and where your strengths are, you mm -hmm. leverage your strengths, but you should want to improve on those weaknesses. Strong vocabulary. Yeah, you have a very That's strong a vocabulary. <laughs> it could be stronger. But obviously, you know, I'm not assuming that, that you need right. support and right. assistance in this, in this area, but I think that you, you also probably very open and mm -hmm. vulnerable um, in a good way, but without losing your masculinity. And right. that is so important. Right. So it might come more naturally to you, but I find that, uh, you know, a lot of the, the men, whether they're friends or even clients that I speak with, they really have trouble with this idea um, of, of opening, sort of, up. 
embracing emotion? Well, you know, it's actually the opposite. I find that they, they're able to do that more now, but they're not able to maintain that frame. So it's the, more the, the strategy of taking back their leadership role, of being confident, of learning how to, to be very masculine, going to the gym, um, being successful, being an entrepreneur, making sure that you're passionate and engaged in I life. I think the key to that is you two have two separate lives. Like some people live for the other person, mm -hmm. then that's what happens. If you have this, your spouse or your girl doing something and she's great, as you said, she, she loves the gym or whatever, and you have this, then I think that creates that. And if you're just living for that person, like, what are you doing today? I want to hang, I wanna hang with you. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, absence makes you grow fonder. Yeah. I, think, I see that a lot of times in today's relationships, mm -hmm. right? Um, in and around my age group, where you have two very interesting individuals that decide to come together and, and be a part of a relationship. And before you know it, it's as if one is trying to assimilate into the other's personality. Right? Yeah. Shortly after, they lose interest in each other, and then there's a hard break breakup. Right? No, the complementarity is important. You must complement each other, but you must maintain Who your you individuality. That's what he was saying. Really. To complement yeah. each other, but being able to maintain individ your individuality. Okay, we're going to have to close up, but I kind of want to ask one more question. Sure. What, I know you're not looking for one, or not necessarily, but what do you think makes a good woman relationship material? Here we go. All right. Three things. I mean, there are a number of things. There are a number of things, Taylor. Um, there are a number of things. Don't answer it. She has to be confident. Uh -huh. She has to be intelligent. And by golly, golly, I would be doing myself an injustice if I did not say that she has to be attractive and attractive to me. Okay. So I think that is a, a good place to stop. Attractive. Say it again. Intelligent. Intelligent. That's not that that's true, though. <laughs> Let's just go with attractive. Just attractive and, and is attractive, the most important. Attractive and personality. Okay. That's it. Yeah. We don't want to go too deep. All right. It's cool. Let's leave it there. Attractive and personality. All right. Well, thank you very much for your opinions, guys. I really appreciated you being on the show. And thanks for watching Love Life 2. Stay tuned for next week's episode.